I've had this camera for 12 years. This is the camera I started my career with. It's a Canon EOS 60D, it's a crop frame. And this lens was the only lens I could afford at the time, except for the kit lens. This is a 50 millimeter F1.8. It cost me about $80 and I still use this lens. It's a great lens, it's all plastic, but who cares, it works. The grip on this, I think I paid $30, got it on Amazon. It's an aftermarket grip, it's falling apart, still works. The problem with this camera was that after so much use, it wasn't holding focus and the sensor plate in the back was uh, shifting and was misaligned and I had to get it fixed, then it still just kept drifting. This camera does not have microfocal adjustments, so you can't compensate for any uh, distance out of focus. I couldn't do a focus test and then set an MFA correction in the camera to fix uh, the problems with it. It is a beast, it's heavy, it's loud. Also, uh, the buffer takes a long time. It's still writing those images to the card that I just took. And finally, uh, it's coming up. Oh, it's still, no, it's still writing the rest of the images that I just took. So this is the camera that started my career. I've shot a ton of images on this. I built my entire headshot portfolio with this combination of uh, camera body and lens. Looks like a UV filter on the front of this because I wanted to protect this cheap $80 lens for some reason. There's nothing else that this can go on, so I'm just gonna keep it on there. Might as well. It doesn't really affect the image quality. I believe this is 18 megapixels, which is still more than enough for what you would need today since everything goes digital and ends up being small. Anyways, I'm not gonna fact check that megapixels. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't affect the work. Now the other great thing about this camera is that not only does it take lenses that are uh, meant for crop sensor, but it also takes red dot EF mount lenses. So this is an EF lens. My next big upgrade came in the form of this. This is the Canon 70-200 f2.8 ISM. This is the first version, I believe. I don't think this is a a Mark II, still a lens that I use today. Putting this on this camera gave me a focal length of up to 320 millimeters and down to... Hey Google, what is 70 times 1.6? The answer is 112. 112 millimeters. So this is uh, effectively a 112 millimeter to 320 millimeter lens when you account for the crop factor on this sensor. This camera body is heavy, this lens is heavy, and this combination caused me some issues in my back that I'm still dealing with. So when I could no longer deal with the focus issue, in order for me to be able to guarantee focus, I was having to shoot at f6.3, f8, or f11. That's fine for certain types of images, certain types of looks. It it didn't give me a lot of room for flexibility and I always had to have my lights up bright to compensate for the lack of light getting into the lens. So after I couldn't deal with this anymore, I went up to the 6D. This is my first full frame sensor camera. The one thing that I did before buying this camera that was really important was I subscribed to this channel so that I could get uh, updates and notifications and more videos like this one, which you should do as well. The 70 to 200 was my workhorse until I got the 24 to 105, which is what I'm shooting on right now. I'm still using the 24 to 105. It came with this camera body. It's a solid F4 all the way through. It's not a floating uh, aperture. It's, it's a fantastic lens. It's almost always on my camera body. When I put it in my camera bag, that lens is on my camera. Let's get a battery in here. There's already a battery in here. I've just discovered an extra battery. This is my 6D. If it was not for COVID, I would probably be still shooting with this camera. COVID introduced a number of issues for me that forced me to go to mirrorless. But it had nothing to do with the camera this time and everything to do with my eyesight, having to wear a mask and having to press my face up against the viewfinder and everything fogging up. Shoots would take me twice as long. I would get about 50% of my shots out of focus. That was causing a major, major problem for me. So with this camera and the 24 to 105, this became my workhorse combination. Not this, the 24 to 105 is what I'm shooting on right now. So the 6D and the 70 to 200 became a good workhorse combination. The 24 to 105 became my 
main lens, and, and it's still my main lens, I'm using it right now. I shot a ton of images on this, a ton of great images with this camera body and that lens. So that then took me to this camera, which is the Canon R6. I only have one, so I'm not gonna be able to show it to you. I'll, I'll put it up on screen and link to it in the description. This camera uh, has been an absolute game changer for me. I'm gonna do an entire video on that. Now when I shoot uh, with my R6, uh, I, I shoot like this with the viewfinder articulated out. I don't have to be up here fogging everything up. I can be out here with the eye tracking autofocus on the R6. Uh, less than 1% of my shots are out of focus, unless I'm intending for them to be out of focus, which I'm starting to do recently as an artistic choice. The other addition that is new for me, this is an 85 millimeter f2.0 lens. This is an RF lens and it only works on the R6. I still use all my EF lenses with the R6 using an adapter, but this uh, 85 millimeter tends to be my go-to now when I'm shooting acting headshots. So that's it. So from the 60D to the 6D to the R6, I like the 6 series. It works perfectly for me. It seems to be the camera that is the best choice for me. I don't need a 5D or an R5. They're overkill for my needs. These work perfectly. Uh, this is my camera strap. If I drop the camera, it doesn't go anywhere. These are really cheap. I think I paid three bucks for five of them from Amazon. I've never dropped a camera. So all this is to say, you don't need an expensive camera to shoot high quality photography. You don't need high megapixels. These images can print out nine by 12. This camera I think is probably effectively worthless, even though it still works. I might be able to get 50 bucks for it. What's even the point? I'm just gonna hang on to it for sentimental value. So let me know in the comments, the camera that you started with and what you're using now and how you feel those upgrades have helped. Thanks again for watching. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to 10,000 followers. Take care.